In this video, we'll be discussing about ethylene signaling pathway. First of all, let's see what are the signaling molecules in it and its receptor proteins. We see the signaling molecule in this pathway is ethylene molecule and its receptor is ETR1, ethylene response 1. This ETR receptor is a copper ion based receptor and is fully functional only when copper ion is present in it. And also remember that this ETR receptor is present on the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum and its reception site is present on the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. Now as we have already said the ETR becomes functional only when copper ions are present then for that purpose we have a transporter molecule called RAN1 response to antagonist 1 which helps in the transportation of these copper ions. And not only these molecules are present for this ethylene signaling pathway but we have also some other factors and regulators in this ethylene pathway like we have CTR1, EIN2, EIN3, ETP1, EBF1 and so on. Now let's discuss the signaling pathway directly. We have two conditions here. One is the absence of ethylene and other being the presence of ethylene. Remember this ETR1 which is the receptor protein in this pathway is negative regulator which means the absence of ethylene will initiate and drive the pathway while as the presence of ethylene molecule will stop the pathway. So this is the case where negative regulator kicks in. Now looking at this diagram we see we have endoplasmic reticulum and on the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum we have ETR1 receptor. And to this ETR receptor the copper ion is bound which acts as a cofactor to make this ETR functional. And also to the ER membrane we have another downstream molecule in the form of EIN2. It has two parts, one part is embedded in the membrane while as the other part is hanging towards the cytoplasmic end. Now getting back to the ETR1 receptor. It has got downstream molecule attached to it in the form of CTR1 molecule as shown in the diagram, this orange color, which is having a kinase domain and on the below side we have a nucleus. So when there is no signaling molecule means there is no ethylene present. At that time the negative regulator receptor ETR1 shows autophosphorylation on its hysterine kinase residues which in turn phosphorylates the CTR1 kinase domains and the activation of CTR1 signals the EIN2 molecule and phosphorylates its cytoplasmic end that's termed as C end and furthermore the phosphorylation of C end in turn activates the ETP1 protein. This ETP1 protein is a Abbox protein and we know Abbox proteins mediates the ubiquitination of proteins and it also regulates the protein turnover within the cells. So after the ubiquitination of EIN2 C end, the EIN2 is sent into the 26S proteosomal complex where it is degraded. This EIN2 is essential molecule for stabilizing the EIN3 transcription factor in the nucleus. Actually if we see inside the nucleus, there is an EIN3 molecule which is attached to a proteosomal complex having EBF, culin and E2 molecules and it is this EIN2 molecule which detaches the EIN3 from the complex and stabilizes the EIN3. So basically we can say EIN2 comes into the nucleus and saves this EIN3 from getting degraded. Here in this case in absence of ethylene the EIN2 is already degraded in the cytoplasm. Now the EIN3 will also be degraded in nucleus by the action of proteasomal complexes. And we know it is the EIN3 molecule which drives the transcription of ethylene response to genes. So no ethylene means no transcription. So this is the case when there is no signal from ethylene molecule. That means when there is absence of ethylene molecule. Now on the other hand when there is a presence of ethylene molecule the opposite happens. First of all here we have ethylene molecule which binds to the ETR1 receptor and turns it off since it's negative regulator. The ETR1 dephosphorylation in turn releases the CTR1 molecule. So now EIN2 which was phosphorylated in absence of ethylene is now dephosphorylated in presence of ethylene. Furthermore we see the dephosphorylation mediates the cleavage of EIN2 C end. The EIN2 C end is cleaved off and is translocated to the nucleus. And here in the nucleus we know we have an EIN3 attached to proteasomal complex. But as soon as EIN2 reaches the nucleus it stabilizes the EIN3 molecule and relieves it from degradation complex. 
so here in the presence of ethylene we see EIN2 saves this EIN3 from degradation and thereafter this EIN3 attaches to ERF genes and drives the transcription so we can say in presence of ethylene the ERF genes are expressed so this is all about ethylene signaling pathway i hope you like the video if you like it give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe this channel thanks